Hello everyone. Well, this is Adam. I'm from Adam's iPod. Um, Magic Black Box, if you would tell everybody where the website is so I don't have to, I would appreciate it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> it is September 30th right now, and so that means it's time to go through some of my CD pickups from the month. Uh, not as big of a haul as I had last month, because last month there was a lot. So this month there's not so much. The first artist, so let's get started. First artist is Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Hypnotic Eye. I, uh, this year I've really been kind of getting into Tom Petty, and I, it started when, at work, we have, uh, we used to have this guy that worked there, and he, um, he would listen to a specific classic rock radio station every day, and it didn't matter what you had it on, he would come in and change it. And this radio station, I hate it. It's a classic rock station. I hate it. I hate it with a hatred that burns like a thousand suns. I hate it. It plays Leonard Skinner and ACDC, and that's pretty much it. And just to give you an idea of the variety, in the morning, they'll play uh, Leonard Skinner's version of Simple Man. And then, in the afternoon, they'll play Shinedown's version of Simple Man. So I hate it. <clears throat> um, but I did realize uh, every now and then they'll play some Tom Petty and I realized after a while that like you know what I like pretty much every single song that Tom Petty does so I got a best of and I really like that and then I got Full Moon Fever and I got Wildflowers and, I'm, and Into the Great Wide Open and I like those and so I saw Hypnotic Eye just sort of sitting there because uh, you know, oh hey new release and so I bought it a little uh First listen was kind of iffy, but it's really grown on me, and I've liked it more as I've gotten into it. Next one was a total nostalgia buy. It, Jacob's Trouble. Self-titled album from 1993 on Frontline Records. I turned on to this because uh, there's a podcast called Frontline Rewind that has artists from that era, Christian artists from that era, the 80s, 90s era, <clears throat> doing interviews and things, and they were on there, and I was like, hey, in Jacob's Trouble, I remember that, and I remember getting that album one year at Kingdom Bound, and really enjoying it, and I bought it, I really like it, never been a huge Jacob's Trouble person, and I don't think that's going to change, but I do really like this album, and um, it's just good, sort of simple alternative rock no frills and I like it it's good next one a little bit weird I mentioned it in the, the last pickups video it is Bloodstained Child Epsilon this was uh, 2011 on Coroner Records see if I can get out of the light I apologize for the light I don't know why it's so bright today um, <clears throat> and Bloodstained Child is a Japanese trance metal band, which means that they're sort of uh, Japanese pop mixed with heavy metal. Um, so they've got like a metal screamer, growler, and uh, female vocals in there, and they put it all together. And so it's dance, but it's metal. It uh, reminds me a lot of Amarantha, another band that I picked up on earlier this year that I really liked. And I really like these guys. And the songs are catchy. There's, uh, they're heavy, but they're still, you know, they're still kind of poppy, and I really like that. They're they're definitely on the more metal side than a band like Amarantha is, a little bit more pop, but still really good. And I love the cover art. I'm a sucker for good cover art. And just let me open that up so you can see, see if you can see the whole thing. That is awesome. And like I said, I'm I'm a sucker for good. good. I would almost bought this for the cover art. That's how good I think it is. And, as if that wasn't enough, the main uh, singer-songwriter, let's see if I can get the picture, right there, that person is the, uh, writes most of the lyrics and the music, and I was like, oh, hey, hey, she's kind of cute. It's a dude. That's a dude, right there. Yeah, I was attracted to a dude, I'm, I'm not going to lie, but mistakes happen, man, it's 2014. My wife thought it was hilarious, by the way. <clears throat> Last one, 
Like I said, short haul this month. Last one though, I'm really, really excited to have this one finally on CD. This is a Christian rock classic. And it's been impossible to find on CD unless you want to pay the, do the dollars. Doppelganger, Daniel Amos. This was just released this year by Born Twice Records. Uh, it is a deluxe edition. And um, I'm, I'm ecstatic to have it on CD. Uh, I didn't have this. The, I came into Daniel Amos, who's one of my favorite bands, came into him kind of late. Came in around Motorcycle. So I missed all the Alarma Chronicles. I missed Darn Floor Big Bite until there was some website I found and they had them on there that you could download and listen to. It was illegal. I'm sorry. But I downloaded them, listened to them, loved them, and then went searching for the CDs and <sighs> nope. So Darn Floor got reissued and I bought that and now Alarma, I bought that. Doppelganger bought that. I'm going to buy all of them. Vachimana, Fear of Symmetry, buy them when they come out too. Cause it, and this is one of my favorite Daniel Ames albums right here. Of all the stuff that they've done. Doppelganger is definitely one of my favorite. Now, that's all for the, the pickups. But I do want to talk, since I got this here, I want to talk about reissuing a little bit. And how you do it properly. And this album right here is a textbook example of doing a reissue properly. Um, it's got folds out. Two discs, the first disc is the album in its entirety. The second disc is alternate mixes, live tracks, odds and sods. Good, great to have extra material. So that's, I always uh, am pleased when they add extra discs. It's got the liner notes, a nice big booklet with all the lyrics. Let's see if I can get you all the lyrics. Some good art pictures from the time. And it's got the, uh, the actual story. The Alarma Chronicles actually had a story. You can't see it. I don't know why I'm showing it. Uh, had a story that went along with it. And the Alarma reissue had the Alarma part. And this one has the Doppelganger part, which is good. So it's got a nice, extensive booklet. Um, great looking packaging. This, this is how you do it. Anybody out there wants to reissue albums, this is how you reissue an album. It's been remastered. I haven't had the chance to listen to it yet. I'm going to today, but spectacular. I'm happy to have this package, and they did a uh, Born Twice Records put it out. They did a great job. And as a little aside, the Daniel Amos store has changed. I've given it some crap on my website because it's slow and hard to get stuff, but they've updated their system or something because it was everything was smooth, and the last couple albums I've ordered from them have been really smooth, good experiences, so I recommend them. Um, they've definitely gotten a lot better. <clears throat> now, a lot of Christian classics that I like have been reissued, um, and some of them are not that great. Here is an example of a reissue that was lazy and terrible. And this is Sacrament, Haunts of Violence. You can't see it because of the glare. Good grief. Um, this originally came out in 1992 on Rex Records, reissued in 2001 by Millennium 8 Records. And this, first of all, let's look at the booklet. It's got, okay, cover, nothing wrong with that, but that's not what came when you bought the CD. It was this cover right here. Now, tell me what's wrong with that. Here's a hint. Why? Why, why would you do that? This is just fine. There's no reason to print it twice. Just don't do that. Just do this. And then use this for notes. Band notes, album notes. The stuff that I do want to see. Not this malarkey. And then inside, do they have the lyrics? Oh, no, no, no. Why would we do that? We've got the Bible study that appeared in the original liner notes for Haunts of Violence. Not terrible. I mean, definitely something you would include in a re-release. But no lyrics, no notes, no nothing. Just that. And this picture isn't even from this album's lineup. This is from Testimony of Apocalypse lineup with Mike Tyrone on vocals. And he doesn't do any vocals on this album. <sighs> 
Then, of course, the this, the gold, that looks, it just looks terrible. Nothing but just a list of the songs. It's just literally the ten songs on the original CD on a different CD. And that's it. Um, if you have the original 1992 edition, you sure as heck don't need this. I, I mean, I, I got this on a, I was in a Christian bookstore and when I was in college and I was like, oh, hey, I haven't heard that in a while. And this was before iTunes and all that. <clears throat> Maybe not. I didn't have it though. Anyway, terrible, terrible. This is actually going to be, this is actually, I pre-ordered it. The Bold Sacrament album has just been re-released by Retroactive. They are known for doing a much, much better job on re-releases, so we'll take a look at those when they come in in the next pickups video. And um, that's it. That's what I got for you today. Appreciate you watching. Always visit the blog, Magic Box, if you would, please. Thank you. Um, visit the website, leave like, comment, subscribe on this video if you liked it, and uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye.